For today's lesson, you need work text pages 133 and 34. Listen as I read something to you. Katie and Joy went on a field trip to the zoo. Katie and Joy saw polar bears. Joy bought some peanuts. Joy fed the monkeys. Katie and Joy rode the bus back to school. How did that sound? See if this is a little bit better. Katie and Joy went on a field trip to the zoo. They saw polar bears. Joy bought some peanuts. She fed the monkeys. Katie and Joy rode the bus back to school. Was that better? The first paragraph repeated the names Katie and Joy too many times. The second one used pronouns. Now, have you noticed that some pronouns are singular and some are plural? Yes, I know that you know that. Well, that means that just like when we use regular nouns, our pronouns have to agree with our verbs. Remember previously we said that singular nouns usually don't end in S or ES, like the word zebra. But plural nouns usually do end in S or ES, like zebras with an S there. Verbs that go with singular nouns usually end in S, so it's just the opposite of nouns, like gallops, that ends in an S, but verbs that go with plural nouns don't, like the word gallop. So if we wanted to make a sentence, we would say zebra what? Gallops or gallop? Zebra is singular, so the verb would be gallops. And of course, we would need to capitalize the first word and add a period there to make it a correct sentence. Now, if our subject is plural, ending in S, the verb, we match that to does not end in S. See? Zebras gallop. Now, we need to do the same thing with pronouns. And do you remember which pronouns are singular and which are plural? We have a handy dandy chart for that. He, she, and it are singular. And we and they are plural. Notice that the plural pronouns don't end in S like nouns do. So I'm actually going to remove that from our chart there. And let's add some verbs like jumps and jump. Now if our subject is she, which verb do we use? She is a singular pronoun, so we need the verb that goes with the singular. What if we use they? They is a plural pronoun, so we need the verb that matches that. They jump. Now, have we covered all of our subject pronouns? Was that you knocking on the monitor? You say we forgot two pronouns? Oh yeah, we forgot I and you. Those are very important subject pronouns, but here's the problem. I is singular. There's only one of me, and aren't we glad? You can be singular if I'm talking to you, or it can be plural if I'm talking to several of you. But let's see where I and you go on our chart. I and you act like they are plural. That means if we write a sentence with I, we need to use a verb that goes with plural subjects. The same for you. Even if we're talking to one person, we use the verb that goes with plural subjects. So let's practice figuring out which verb we need to use. And I want you to either make yourself some smiley faces 
or you can just use your hands and your fingers like show one for singular and two for plural. Okay, here are some sentences. She jump rope or she jumps rope. First, let's draw a line between the subject and the verb. She is our subject. Is she singular or plural? She is singular. So we need a verb for singular. Is jump or jumps singular? She jumps rope is correct. Good job. Let's do next. You sing in the choir or you sings in the choir? Little tricky. Dividing the subject from the verb, I know that you could be singular or plural, but that pronoun takes a plural regardless. So we need to say, you sing in the choir. We eat or eats pizza. Let's underline the subject once. That's we, and we is plural. Are you holding up two smiley faces or fingers or fists? The verb for plural does not have an S, so we need to say we eat pizza. Okay? I like or likes ice cream. What's tricky about this? I is singular, but it takes a verb that goes with plural, even though it's singular. So we need to say, I like ice cream. He live lives next door to me. He is singular, so he lives next door to me. They visit or visits the mountains every summer. Underline the subject, which is plural. So we'll underline the verb visit. All right, that was grand. I think one of Dr. G's patients is having a little problem with pronoun and verb agreement. So let's give them a visit. Oh, Dr. G, I don't feel well. I don't like this rumbling in my tummy. I know, Chester, I know. Let's take a look at these scans. I think they'll help us see what's wrong. You said it happened after you ate lunch? Yeah, it just didn't agree with me. I see. Wait a minute. I think I might know what's going on. You do? Yes. Take a look at this. Do you see anything wrong? I'm not sure. How about now? Wait, something doesn't look right. Yep, you're on to something. Take a look at these pronouns and verbs together. They don't agree. Chester, I think you have agreematosis. Oh, that sounds awful. Is it worse than rheumatitis? Not necessarily. It should clear up with some PV juice. PV juice? What is that? It helps fix mistakes with pronoun verb agreements. I don't understand. Here, let's take another look at your scans. I think that'll help clear things up. Just like singular nouns need singular verbs, singular pronouns need singular verbs. He is a singular pronoun, which means the verb should be... Is! That's right! Because the word is is singular. Here, take a sip. Phew, I feel a little bit better. Oh, but there's still something wrong. Hmm, let's take a look at your second scan. They is a plural pronoun, which means it needs a... Plural verb. Right. Just like plural nouns need plural verbs, plural pronouns do too. I think I get it. So it should be, they sing. Great job, Chester. Thanks. Dr. G, I think, I think I feel a lot. Oh no. It's okay, Chester. 
Let's take another scan and see what's going on. Ah, I see some things that don't agree. Two more pronoun verb mistakes. Really? But I used I and you as singular pronouns. Shouldn't they have singular verbs? That's what I would think too, Chester. But some medical experts out there decided that those two pronouns actually use plural verbs. What? Yeah, it's pretty odd. But that's how it is. It's just one of those things we have to memorize. <sighs> okay. You'll get it, Chester. Don't worry. So do you know what these verbs should be? Well, if they're supposed to be plural, then you go and I eat. Excellent. Take a sip of that PV juice. Phew. Thanks, Dr. G. I feel so much better. Sure thing. I hope you have a great afternoon and be careful what you eat for dinner. Oh, I will. See you later. All right, we need to work on our work text page. I'm on page 133. Here you need to draw a line between the subject and the predicate of each in each sentence. So go ahead and do that. Then mark the sentence, so one or the other, mark the sentence that uses the correct verb with the subject pronoun. So similar to what we did today in our lesson. Okay, down here, underline the subject pronoun once, underline twice the verb that agrees with that subject. Okay, and then here, write a sentence about one of your friends. Use the pronoun he or she in your sentence. Okay, so pause the program and complete 1 through 6 on page 133. All right, we'll go over the answers real quickly. First thing you were supposed to do is draw a line between they and play. And then between they and plays, which one of those would be correct? They play, they plays. They is plural, so we need play. They play. Okay, number two, she walk or she walks. She walked the dog would not be correct, so it is she walks there. All right, then down here, underline the subject once he need or needs. He needs. Plural we drive. Number five, you, but we don't know and we don't really care if it's singular or plural. We need to use the verb that goes with plural, which is give. All right, and then here is my sentence that I said she makes beautiful pottery. That's what I wrote there. All right, the back is very much the same as what we just did. So I think that you can work on that on your own, and I will see you next time. Complete work text pages 133 and 34.